Paranormal Activity. Well, um, here's a review that's actually very easy for me to do because, let's face it, you already know whether or not you're going to like this or not because you've pretty much already heard from the hype machine surrounding this movie what kind of film it already is. And in a way, that's both a good and bad thing about this movie because the comparisons to The Blair Witch Project are inevitable, unavoidable, and probably without the Blair Witch Project, paranormal activity would not exist. It's the very similar kind of movie wherein it's filmed in a, in a documentary style that purports itself to be real, and uh, very supernatural things happen. It, it, it kind of portrays itself as kind of an anti-movie. I, I kind of liken it to stumbling across some raw footage that you would find on like YouTube or something like that. Although I don't remember seeing anything quite like it on YouTube. Um, I remember looking for some uh, ghost footage that was on a show called Ghost Hunters or something like that where they would visit a prison and the, typically, I, the, probably 99.99999% of the time, they don't ever find anything on Ghost Hunters. And that's... I, I, I don't know how these guys are still employed. But there is, like, this one time out of a million where they see something and you were just like, what the fuck was that? And um, the, one of those times was they were at a prison and they see something, like, run towards the camera and run back real fast. You're like, holy shit, what the fuck was that? And you're like, nobody knows what the hell that was. I remember another time I was actually watching on the Sci-Fi Channel, and I, I saw Miracle of Miracles, this one episode on the Sci-Fi Channel, where something did happen, uh, where they they would turn around, and there was like something reflected in like a stainless steel refrigerator on the thermal camera. And the, like apparently that was impossible. And I, I actually used to watch Ghost Hunters a lot in the background. They never found anything. They were always like, oh, we found EVP. And like, if you listen real close, it sounds like Paul is dead, miss him, and... It, they never heard anything. They never do. And of course, their first reaction when they see something is to run away, which I thought was really funny. Um, but yeah, it, it, the movies like this aren't really movies in the sense that they're put forward in such an unusual fashion that uh, I, there's there's really two camps of people about it. Like one who they expect a more uh, traditional type of movie, and they're very disappointed when. They don't get any of these elements. It's, it doesn't follow like a standard narrative structure. It doesn't have effects, scares, uh, real actors, must be said. Um, and it doesn't have music and things like that. And, and a lot of people who go to these movies and they are horrified by what they see. I mean, they are sucked into this movie like nothing else because they're able to suspend their disbelief and very simple things almost you'd call them uh, beyond simple cliches that when used by themselves are far more effective I find than millions and millions of dollars thrown into computer generated special effects and I'll just tell you right now I love this movie for the same reason that I loved the Blair Witch Project which already alienates me among many of you because a lot of you saw that movie and were like, nothing happens in that movie. You don't see anything in that movie. And you're right. You don't see anything in that movie and that's why it's so scary. That's, that's why it's really good. Now, I will admit that when you watch movies like Paranormal Activity and The Blair Witch Project at home, it's going to be much more boring because I think a lot of this is... Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a huge factor of watching this in a theater with other people who are also being scared and coincidentally the screen is much bigger you're kind of leaning forward in your seat to see things on the screen when you're at home it's a much safer environment you're familiar, the lights are brighter uh, the sound hookup in the theater is traditionally much better so uh, when, it, when it comes to the sound design and the, and the darkness I find the theater environment is much more suitable to this kind of movie in fact I would say Paranormal Activity might be virtually worthless not seeing it in a theater I remember kind of rolling my eyes at the footage of the people in the theaters like they, 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 show, they, they didn't show any of the movie they showed the reactions of people to the movie and I was kind of like that ah, looks staged and you know it probably was staged but they were like Aah! But believe it or not, when I was at the theater, the crowd was game for this kind of thing. They were scared. They were reacting to the shit going on on the screen. They were scared. 
And, I mean, they were laughing about it, but it was that kind of nervous laughter where they were really engaged in the movie. And that, my friends, is rare. To see that kind of involvement, that kind of engagement in the story and what's going on on the screen, and that is magic, okay? Filmmakers live and die, fucking kill themselves, wishing people would get that engaged in their movies. And when that happens... That's magic, okay? And Paranormal Activity is that kind of movie, but if you're kind of a stick in the mud and you're not going to allow yourself to suspend your disbelief, if you're going to say, like, this is low budget, it's crap, there's no, like, it's not it, it's not the kind of movies that I like to movie, this is not a horror movie, you don't see anything, I can't convince you. If you thought Blair Witch is boring, I think, I think this is boring. And I'm going to come across as something of a film snob here, but the reason I like this movie so much is because, and, and then movies like The Blair Witch and stuff like that, is because horror movies, as you know them, are shit. Have been shit, have always been shit, and will always be shit. Because none of you, and virtually no filmmakers, know what horror movies are. There's a great huge distinction between a horror movie, as you know it, and a scary movie, as I would define by being something like paranormal activity like that. A scary movie is something that actually provokes the reaction of fear in you, like where, where you are actually concerned and, and, and fearful of what you might see on screen coming up next. I'll try to explain. Fear is provoked by, like, a scary movie happens when you are, it, it plays on real, legitimate human fears, okay? And even horror movie classics, such as uh, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, anything with kind of a standard slasher in it, none of those are, were, ever will be scary, because... At some point, maybe the originals you might consider to be kind of scary because it played on fear of, like, you know, you being at summer camp and some crazy guy killing you and stuff like that. Maybe it might have had that kind of fear. I think in that regard, the best slasher was really Halloween, the original Halloween, because, again, playing on the unknown, you know, a lot of, a lot of girls who are babysitting or, and still babysit have a legitimate fear of being alone in the house when somebody kicks in the door and just wants to fucking kill you. When it starts to become a slasher movie, though, when it starts to play on those tropes, it's really just a cartoon. You know, a highlight reel of gore effects and stuff like that. And it's not scary. Um, movies that... Uh, people might say horror has had a resurgence when it comes to the so-called torture porn. And I actually, I find those are more effective than most of the, the standard slasher movies, but only in the sense that it draws on a legitimate human emotion, not fear, but revulsion. Uh, there, there might be a visceral reaction to the violence and the gore being inflicted on screen, and that it is very realistic and very uh, very chunky looking, you know, that, that kind of reaction, but it's not fear. You might have a fear of, like, physical pain, not quite the same thing. But fear of the unknown, fear of the unseen, that's what's key. And you can almost count the number of movies that play on that very legitimate fear on, you know, two hands. Um, I, I do have some examples, and they're not quite the same as Blair Witch Project uh, not, or Paranormal Witch. These are more legitimate films in the sense that they have, like, a, like a, st a more standard screenplay structure. But uh, movies like... Uh, probably the most prototypical horror movie of all time, Jaws, which played on a very real fear people have of, you know, swimming in the ocean and something very large and pissed off chewing their legs off. And, again, a lot of people say its greatest strength was the fact that you never see the shark until very near the end when it's, when it's very, you know, farther back. It, 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 it's that kind of fear. Um, I always thought movies like uh, The Eye... Probably the shakiest uh, example I have, but The Eye was, uh, y it was kind of one of those icy dead people movies, 
But you didn't know what these ghosts wanted. You, it was full of very unfamiliar things, uh, very scary things like ghosts. Like if you, all of a sudden you were able to see ghosts and they were able to see you, all of a sudden you have this, uh, you're seeing this other world and you have these people with very alien, unfamiliar intelligences who are looking at you when their goals are unknown. The Exorcist. Uh, you know, William Friedkin's movies. Uh, films like that, in fact, you might also argue that Exorcist is very familiar in terms of, like if, it, like, if you took The Exorcist and made it a documentary, you might consider it something like Paranormal Activity. Uh, and that's not a spoiler, by the way. Don't worry about it. But... Films like that are exceedingly rare, where you find the simple act of walking into a room draws fearful reactions from people, like, people will legitimately say, please don't go in that room, please don't go, like, or you'll see a curtain blowing in the wind and people will be like, do not push that curtain aside, you don't want to see what's beyond that curtain. Uh, it, very remarkable that a movie will breed a real terror of something you don't even know what it is. And it's it's fucking with you. And you don't know if it wants to kill you or like take you over or just make you fearful. It's working. And really, I, I actually think I should make a list of movies that are like that because the, the movies people consider to be horror films... Are, are garbage. Even so-called masters of the craft, I find, have not made good movies when it comes to horror movies. Uh, George A. Romero, one of the most adored and universally loved uh, horror movie directors, has, in my opinion, only really made maybe two good movies. Uh, Night of the Living Dead... I didn't, I, I didn't like Dawn of the Dead, but th there, that's for a very different reason. I actually thought that was effective, but I didn't like it because, honestly, I thought the makeup effects in Dawn of the Dead were kind of crap. But um, beyond that one, what was the other one? Um, I, I liked Day of the Dead. Um, but even that, like uh, Diary of the Dead, uh, if, you know, for being a so-called master, that guy has made a lot of stink burgers. Uh, Land of the Dead was fucking awful. Uh, what was it? Diary of the Dead. I call it Diarrhea of the Dead, by the way. Was uh, on my short list for one of probably the top ten worst movies of that year. That movie was garbage. Okay, I'm sorry, but it was. Um, so and I actually used him in, a, in an example of one of my previous reviews where, like, no matter what, if George A. Romero puts out a movie, you're kind of going to go see it just because you have so much respect for the guy. You know, he, he made such good movies back in the day, if he makes a movie half as good, it's kind of worth it, that, 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 that kind of reaction. But anyway, going back to Paranormal Activity, which you'll notice I haven't talked that much about uh, until now, uh, I may not be able to avoid spoilers much longer, but as soon as I get into them, I'll warn you. But I, I, my review in, that, in a nutshell was kind of like, you already know if you're down with this movie. You know, it's it's not going to surprise you. Like, it's not going to be a different movie than you think it is. Like, uh, like maybe Inglorious Bastards, like I said, was a much different movie than you might have anticipated from the trailers. No. If you liked Blair Witch, you will like this. If you thought even Blair Witch was tolerable, I actually... How do I compare them? Um, tough one. Uh, I would... I think time has kind of skewed my perspective of Blair Witch Project. Uh, again... I think this is going from an in-theater response. Like, if you see this first time in the theater, which I think you'll have to. I think if you're waiting on this for home video, don't. Watch it in a theater. Uh, I would highly recommend it in a theater. Blair Witch Project has kind of cooled down quite a bit, in my opinion, just because I have seen it several times on home video. Not the way to see it. It's really not. Um, I actually did see it on my big screen in the dark, and I thought it was much more effective. But... Yeah, it, it's it's one of those crowd participation movies that I think half of the reaction you're going to get is is with other people. Now, okay, description of the movie, avoiding spoilers. It's about uh, uh, an engaged-to-be-engaged 20-something couple. Uh, I forget where they're living at, but it doesn't really matter since you almost never leave the house in this movie. Um, basically, the girlfriend of this relationship, Katie, is experiencing 
paranormal activity, and she has since she was about eight. And so they make it very clear in this movie that it's not the house that's haunted, that this paranormal activity has been following her around basically her entire life. And so that kind of uh, diffuses the argument right away of like, why don't they just leave the fucking house? Because they can't, they, they can, but it wouldn't help, you know, it wouldn't matter. Like, whatever is following them around follows her around, not the house. So, like, uh, actually, that, that was actually the biggest complaint like, against a lot of horror movies. Like, why don't they just leave the house? Like, um, I remember watching a movie with, uh, called uh, Be uh, Behind the Mask of Leslie Vernon Story, which I actually didn't like that much, but it did have some great moments in it. And one of those moments is, like, what do you do if there's a slasher on your heels? And the guy says, run towards the sunrise and never, ever fucking stop for anything. Um, you know, that, that that's like your way out of almost every horror movie, you know. But uh, the, the boyfriend, uh, who reminds me a lot of me, by the way, uh, he's, uh, I'm saying uh, a lot, I'm sorry. He wants to set up a camera in the bedroom to record what's going on, because at first he's pretty skeptical, and uh, he, he doesn't really believe what's going on, um, and although he's open to it, you know, he's, he would very much love for something to ha go on on the camera, and again, this is not a spoiler, shit does happen, you know, you see this in the trailer, shit happens in this movie, and when the shit starts going down, you know, she's pretty freaked out by it, of course, she's been freaked out since she was eight, and his reaction, which I thought was very close to mine, was one of initial shock, you know, when it's going on, he's scared, but in the light of day, he's like, this is awesome! We gotta put the camera up, like, all the fucking time now. We gotta record fucking everything. And, you know, YouTube this shit. And, actually, I, I, I would have liked that line, let's YouTube this shit. You know, I would have liked to see him, like, uploading the shit online, like, check this out, guys, look, my hits are going through the roof, you know. But, uh, he, you know, his reaction was very, was very spoony in nature, you know, where he was, where he was like, oh, we gotta record this shit, dude. We gotta, like, like get all this... Like, can we make more of this shit happen? Like, can you, like, provoke the thing? And she's like, fuck you, dude, no. And he's, he's like, come on. And they're like, come on, baby, let's do it. Do it. And she's like, fuck it. Are you out of your fucking mind? Like, no. And so, like, I, I, I thought the relationship between these two characters was brilliantly done. Where, you know, uh... Not only could you identify with both characters, you understood the reasoning for the behavior of both these characters, and yet you didn't think that the, the boyfriend's behavior is kind of jerky. Let's put it. Let, let's be blunt on this one. And yet, I still think I saw a lot of myself in his reactions, and like wanting to provoke these incidents at first, um, because this is weird shit. It's it, what's going on. Like you'd want to get this on tape. You would want proof. Uh, you would want to potentially, you know, kind of ride this thing to fame and fortune because, you know, at first none of this stuff is uh, is seems to be dangerous. It's it's scary, yeah, but you know, it, ghosts by and large don't hurt you. So, and, and you know, you can totally understand her reaction to where she's just like, "Please, can we not piss whatever the hell this thing is off and and not fucking provoke it? Let's just." play this cool, you know, like, it's left me alone, by and large, and all of a sudden you're changing things, and he's like, oh, let's, you know, so she's calling psychics over and stuff like that, and, uh, so, but, you know, yeah, he really should have tried to play ball and, you know, kind of appease her, uh, appease her fears and stuff like that, but you get why he doesn't, you know, he, and so it's that legitimacy of these characters and the fact that you genuinely like them, that you buy into the horror of it all. you th I think the greatest failure of so many horror movies is that, uh, I, and in fact the most confusing aspect of so many horror movies, is that you're cheering for the killer. And, in, and don't even argue with me on that, it's because in almost every movie, every horror movie you ever watched, you are meant to cheer for the killer. Because... What do they do? They in like Friday the Thirteenth, uh, like the Freddy versus like Freddy versus Jason was one of the worst examples of that. They 
the, the the deaths that are inflicted upon these characters are usually a comeuppance. Uh, they're a punishment for bad deeds, bad behaviors, various bad things that are done. So, uh, especially with uh, more recent horror movies, these characters are so loathsome, unlikable, annoying. Like, especially Friday the 13th movies. They're, they are downright annoying. And you are begging for Jason to go kill these guys. That's not horror. That's not scary. Never... I, I, I can't imagine how anyone would con confuse those two emotions. Like, when, it, when Jason kills a guy, you're like, well, good. You're not like, oh my god, I can't watch this. You're just like, good, glad he's fucking dead. Horror is when, like, you, you have people you genuinely like or at least have some emotional investment in, and all of a sudden bad things are happening to them, and you feel bad for them. I think Paranormal Activity succeeds spectacularly in that regard, in that you are afraid for them. You identify with them. You don't want them to die. Now, you're excited as things are happening, but... At the same time, you you uh, you want them to, to overcome these things. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and so when the stuff starts happening, and I will get into spoilers now. Um, and these are mild spoilers. I think most critics. I, I actually did look at a few reviews before I went, but I, I avoided most of the spoilers. But I, I did read them when I got home a little bit. Um, it turns out that it's not really, or at least, they don't really tell you what it is. They make their best guess, and they, they kind of come across, uh, they, they finally settle on the fact that they think that it's a demon. It's not so much a ghost, because the, the psychic is very clear on this thing. He says, like, yeah, look, a ghost has human emotions, it was once a person. A demon wants to cause fear and pain and suffering and things like that, and... This is the kind of thing that is probably, like, haunting you. Like, it's come for you. And so the guy is like, well, can we talk to it? Can we try to negotiate with it? And uh, can we give it what it wants? And the guy's like, fuck, no. Why would you want to do that? It's a fucking demon. Like, uh, he doesn't say quite those words, but he's like, you don't want to open a dialogue with this fucking thing. You don't want to invite it in your fucking house. And you don't want to give it what it wants because it, what it wants is one of you because it's been following Katie her whole life clearly it wants her and so so all of a sudden you're it was very effective I thought that whole development because they made it very clear that uh, this is not something that is easily overcome its motives are either uh, hopelessly complex or uh, dreadfully simple if that makes sense so, when they start uh, videotaping this thing, there's this kind of, there, there's an increasing pall of dread over the film, where, yeah, they're proving that this thing is somewhat legitimate, or uh, not somewhat, very legitimate, and they're doing these tests to make sure that they're not losing their minds and things like that, so they get proof, but they're, at the same time, like, what do they do? Like, they can't, they're trying to figure this out, but... They can't, you know. They even if they figure it out, uh, what do they do about it? They can't fight this thing. It's like, and that's again why it's so horrific. Is because you're hoping they find some way to to drive it away, whatever it is. But you know that they probably can't and won't. There's no escape from it, um, and th th that was very effective. Um, weaknesses of this film. There were. Yeah, uh, th there were a number of film, uh, not a uh, number of weaknesses that I thought were apparent in this film. Um, but at the same time, I'm not sure how I would fix them because I think a lot of the weaknesses that come across in the film kind of give it its legitimacy as a non-movie. It gives it legitimacy as kind of being raw footage. You know, like you're, you're watching an unpolished product. You know, somebody like me... Uh, taking uh, documentary footage of something that would be happening to me, and no, you know, it's, it doesn't seem rehearsed. It doesn't seem that it's staged. 
it seems a little more realistic in that sense. And by that I mean there are it does dwell a little too long on their arguments on whether or not they should be recording or should not be recording, um, what tests they should be running, whether or not they should call the demonologist, whether or not they should call the psychic back. There's a little bit too much arguing that goes on about that, but at the same time, you still buy it. You know, you, you still buy that these guys are kind of going back and forth on these issues quite a lot because, it, let's face it, it's, the, it's at the forefront of their minds. But it does get a little repetitive, and I find that uh, the the action and pacing is a little more inconsistent in the terms of it, it kind of it, it kind of goes like red light, green light, all the time where you'll be watching them sleep. And that's where most of the paranormal shit happens is, is late at night when they go to bed. And so they have like a camera running with the night vision on and the weird things start to happen. And in the daytime they kind of are dealing with the aftermath of it. Like they're, they're kind of walking around the house making sure everything's okay. They start to argue about whether or not they really should be provoking the spirit further with, with the camera and the tests and uh, the Ouija board that the one guy wants to bring in. Things like that. So, so it kind of goes like... Night, scary. Daytime, not so scary. Nighttime, scary. And it, it kind of like stops and starts. But, still, very effective. Um, I, I'm not sure how it would fix that. I, in fact, I thought one of the best moments of that movie was about three quarters of the way through when they're really run ragged uh, by, the, by the spook that's going on here. And it's the daytime and they're trying to... Like, she's trying to catch some sleep in the middle of the day. And... Uh, something happens upstairs during the day. Uh, that basically, like a painting, uh, not a painting, uh, a picture of them together gets smashed. And all of a sudden you realize that this thing is happening during the day. You know, um, th like, th whatever is haunt I, I have allergies, I'm sorry, that's why I'm getting all kind of misty-eyed. And I'm so scared. Um, what happens is, like, you start to realize that all bets are off when it comes to this ghost thing. Like, uh, it's coming through during the day. Like, all, like before you were like, uh, this stuff is going on at night. You know, as long as we kind of brace ourselves for when the sun goes down, at least it's predictable. You know, <laughs> like they're not they're not equipped to deal with this thing. But as long as it occurs between the hours of like twelve p.m. and four a.m., there's there's kind of a window that they can deal with this. All of a sudden, like noon, you know, this fucking picture on the wall gets smashed and like clawed to shit and they're like oh Jesus like what the fuck we do now like this is coming through all the time now and like uh, I thought that was that was a very dreadful moment in this like dreadful in a good way where all of a sudden like you thought you kind of understood the rules here you know like, uh, when when it's nighttime scary shit happen no no daytime it's it doesn't fucking care like it's kind of it's gonna do whatever it wants and it'll do it any when it wants a few things uh about i remember they were talking about they wanted to remake this and i'm glad they didn't because it would have come across as much more staged i think the low budget look works that said uh the they kind of rely a lot on the fact that uh, footsteps in the night are scary, and they are because. Uh, in fact, I think that's almost the primary scare. Pretty much through the entire movie is uh, at late at night they're asleep and you hear footsteps. You hear them coming up the stairs. You hear them in the hallway. You hear them in the room, and it's one trick, but man, it works. I would have liked to have seen them shake it up a little bit. But, at the same time, I don't know if they should have. Because, again, if you start getting weird, uh, if you start really getting creative, uh, changing it up a bit, you start it starts to seem kind of staged. Um, you really start to dread those footsteps. You really start to be afraid uh, when you hear the, the, uh, the footstep sounds coming, and you hear it a lot... But every time it happens, you know shit is going down. If all of a sudden it was doing like the Freddy Krueger like nails on the wall thing, if it all of a sudden, if if all of a sudden you started hearing like children giggling or a deathly wind or a, or wolves howling, you'd be like, oh please, we, are we really doing this? But you know that footstep sound, the foot like it sounds like cloven fucking hooves or something like that, and you're like, Jesus fucking Christ, what is coming through the fucking door? Like, it's it really is. Terrifying. Um, 
trying to think uh, what else. Oh, uh, I think many people might have a problem with the ending. And I'm still kind of turning that one over in my head about whether or not I like the ending. And uh, I won't spoil what the ending is, because if you've come this far, you you probably still haven't seen the movie. and You're, you're, you're probably willing to write it out. But uh, I won't tell what happens. But it, it kind of... Uh, there's a money shot <laughs> uh, to to put it put a name on it. Uh, Blair Witch Project had that as well, where it had a money shot. And if if you know what that was, and if you haven't seen it by now, just go fu- turn the video off. Fucking watch Blair Witch Project. Um, the money shot of Blair Witch Project was when Heather comes down the stairs and turns around, and you see the dude standing in the corner, just like in the urban myth about the kid who was forced to stand in the corner while the other kids were killed. That was fucking amazing. Like, the, the whole movie was built around that one .75 second shot. And it was so good that it was amazing. Um, I think the money shot, maybe they were a little too focused on getting this money shot for Paranormal Activity. That uh, it might, you might consider that it kind of cheapens what happens That's that's been earned so... That that's been built up so slowly, and it's like a pot boiler that you that, that, like that you you never really want it to blow. You know, uh, you it, it's it's almost bad when you finally are confronted with the truth of what's going on. Let's put it that way. Um, it's kind of the, the, I actually almost basically called what the final shot would be. And it was exciting when it happened, but I almost hate it when I'm right when it comes to movies like that. I really liked it, though. And I'm not sure if I would have done anything differently, because, again, it probably wouldn't have worked as well. I would have liked to have... Here, here's what... I'm, I'm kind of turning around in my head whether or not uh, I would have liked to have seen this or not. Like I said, the scares were very basic, effective, but basic. Um, and what I really would have liked to have seen was, at some point... Just all hell fucking breaks loose. Like, there, there's a few points where you can hear, like, screaming and, like, smashing shit into walls. And, like, they think, like, furniture's being thrown around. And you hear this stuff going on. Like, you see a chandelier swinging back and forth. And um, I, I, I almost would have liked to have seen... You remember in Exorcist when basically, like... The war is on. Like, this this fight is on. And the bed is floating up. And she is puking all over the place. Like, we're not even playing anymore. Like, there's fucking horns on the girl. She's like, her eyes are rolling back in her head. And she's like... Aah. And, like, she's jamming a crucifix in her snatch. And you're like, Jesus fucking Christ. This is out of her fucking mind. And I almost would have liked to have seen just, like, five minutes of... Like, them just sitting up in bed, and, like, windows blowing out, books flying off the shelves, the bed slamming against the ceiling, people getting thrown left and right, like, fucking pentagrams, like, appearing, cats tearing their faces off, and, like, just, ah, and, and things like that. I'll, I, and, again, like, <laughs> it, I, again, this is why I'm not making this movie. But, uh, yeah, you can, you can almost buy that happening in this movie, and it doesn't. But, uh, I almost can't decide, like, I would have liked to have seen, like, an option, like, maybe just, like, a deleted scene, like, alternate ending, where, like, just hell opens, and, like, this, all this slow burn just culminates in, like, a fucking volcano of hellish paranormal activity. Uh, just, just as like some just orgasmic payoff, cataclysmic event to to pay this thing off, because you almost feel like it's coming, like like this ghost is just playing, you know, whatever it is, it's just kind of, it's like just, it, it's not even really trying, you know, it's it's just fucking with them at this point, you know, it all, and just at some point, you know, they're like, all right, just what do you got, ghost? Like, what do you got? It, it shows them what it's got, you know, like. Anyway, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so, big spoiler, but, um... I, I think some of you might have an issue with the ending in, in, in that regard, where they either thought it might have been too much or far too little. 
I think what was frustrating to me was the sense that we never really got any answers. That uh, we assume it's kind of a demon, but what did it really want? What is it? Uh, what it was its objective? Why did it uh, haunt this woman for her entire life? Uh, was was what was its goal? And again, maybe that's why it's so effective because we don't know and we will never know. And that notion that we will never know is what makes it so effective and scary. Fear of the unseen. Fear of the unknown. Oh, another really scary movie. Another Spielberg movie, actually. Uh, Spielberg does this very well, I find. If I have a lot of respect for the for the Spielbergster. Um, less now than in the past, but uh, not respect. But I haven't liked his movies recently as much as I did in the past. But back in the day, he was really good at at letting your imagination do a lot of the work. Uh, movies like Jaws, movies like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which, and if you've been paying attention to previews, you'll notice that there's a movie called The Fourth Kind that's coming up, which uh, will draw instant comparisons to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Again, if that's a movie you haven't seen, you deserve to see that. Uh, you owe it to yourself to see that movie, because I wouldn't call it a horror movie, but... There is a lot of tension, a lot of dread, and uncertainty, and it is a fearsome fucking movie to watch sometimes. Um, I, I think it, it kind of got uh, probably unfairly summarized into a few little sound bites, that movie. Uh, but if you've never even heard of it, check it out. Like, old Spielberg stuff was really, really good. Uh, that movie is, I, I think, underseen, uh, overlooked. Probably That's <laughs> underseen, overlooked. Uh, I'm trying to think of other movies that, that I would recommend to you guys, just in terms of a horror... Oh, I know. Another movie that... Uh, another reason I find that um, scary movies and disaster movies... Uh, people seem to think disaster movies are scary, and they're not. And you, you wonder why that is. And I'll tell you why that is. Movies like uh, Independence Day, or... Uh, um, most of these super disaster movies, like The Day After Tomorrow, uh, most famously coming up is the movie 2012. And that movie is going to be terrible. And I'll tell you why it's going to be terrible. is because you don't believe it. You, you don't buy what's going on. You're not scared of what's going on. You can't relate to it. It's about the special effects. It's not about the, the human story. It's not about scaring you. And you're not going to be scared. You're just watching people get lined up for the slaughter, and I think it's that failure of, uh, that that failure to invest in in a movie emotionally that really causes these movies to be a waste of time. 2012 will make a shitload of money, but that's because it's a it's meant to be like a blockbuster movie. It's like you spend this much money on a movie and it kind of breeds its own audience with the special effects, but really you're just watching a 3D animator masturbate on a reel of film. You, you, I, I, I really find these movies to be abysmally boring because I don't care. You know, and, and it's, it's not about the story. It's about watching buildings fall down. It's about watching fires and aliens blow up the White House and, you know, the money shots like that. Because, like, the, the whole Independence Day, all you can remember from that movie was the White House exploding. There's always a shot like that in every disaster movie. But it's... You're not like, oh my god, the White House. It's not about that. But there are, like, global extinction movies and disaster movies that are much more effective when it comes to telling that story. And the one that I can think of right now that was uh, very effective was a movie called Pulse. Uh, not the remake of Pulse, although that one was okay. Just okay, but I thought the ending was a complete betrayal of everything that came before. Uh, I, I would not recommend the American Pulse, but the I believe it's Japanese. The Japanese version called Pulse, or uh, the, the has Cairo, something like that, is an excellent movie, and the, it's very understated. But it is like an end of the world movie, and at the same time, uh, it follows basically like one two people. As as these horrific events start occurring around them, people start dying, and they don't know why. There seem to be like ghostly apparitions occurring, and they don't know why. And 
people really start to despair and you buy into that because they start to get the feeling that there's nothing they can do and you care about these people. And there is only one uh, real shot in that movie that highlights the true magnitude of what is going on. I won't say just one shot, but one major like set-piece shot that happens in this movie that really drives it home. And uh, it's a plane crash that occurs in that film. And I think they rip that off in the American version of that as well, but it's much more effective in the Japanese version. Where you see a plane go down, and your reaction is, you are like, oh my god. Like, this is happening. You know it's not happening, but you are that invested in the story that when you see something that cataclysmic and disastrous occur, it's been earned. And you can't just... It cheapens the uh, the effect. Like, when, when you see uh, something that... when You, you know, I, I hate to raise the specter of 9-11, but, you know, that was a building. You know, that was full of people. And there are a few things more horrific than that. And so when you start doing things like The Day After Tomorrow, when you just... When you show, like, a typhoon just, like, freezing a city over... It cheapens it. it. It really... You don't have an idea of the magnitude and scale, nor do you really believe that any of the characters do. And... It's it's cheap. It's it's ineffective. And it, it you're, you're not really believing the fact that the, there's any kind of human loss or a, a death toll or anything like that. And so I think that's really vital, that uh, when you show something tragic or disastrous or horrific on screen that it's been earned. If you start killing people off senselessly, there's no sense to it. There's no feeling to it. And at the same time, it's boring. So I've been going on a long time about this, but I think it's important that, uh, that I kind of explain my stance on what is and is not scary in movies and perhaps in real life as well and where I come from when I say a movie is not a good horror movie or uh, what is and is not scary. Now, you can easily disagree. In fact, I encourage you to disagree because, you know, I, I know I just ripped on Romero hardcore and I know I just made some fucking blood enemies doing that. But I'll try to explain that one. In movies like Night of the Living Dead and Day of the Dead, which I found to be... Probably, I, I think a lot of people don't like that one, but um, you start to care legitimately about the characters in that film. Night of the Living Dead is based around, like, was it, three, four people? And it never leaves that house, and you get to know them, you get to like them and care about them. And, you, and if you don't like them, you at least are familiar with them. You know, you feel like you know them. And so when they're gone, you feel a legitimate sense of loss. There is a real feeling of solitude, of isolation, of being overwhelmed by what's going on outside. When you start to play it for laughs, when you start to uh, when you start to cheapen it with gore, when you start really trying to uh, get too stylistic and make too much of a political statement or a sociological statement like I think he did too much with Dawn of the Dead, I think you start to lose focus of the emotional core of the movie. So that's where I'm trying to come from. I, I, I think he did do a very effective job in those two movies, but in many of his movies, he tries way too hard to carry like a message which comes across as very heavy-handed when it's not necessary. In fact, I think sometimes he feels compelled to put a message in his movies uh, like to to use these zombies as the brush for his uh, for his political statements when you know you really don't need to use them as a blank slate to write your your anti political graffiti on you know it's sometimes not necessary I, I I know that they're a great tool for a metaphor but sometimes it's enough to use the people as a metaphor for you know themselves you know I'm babbling but yeah. It was one of the most fun experiences I've had in the movie theater in quite a long time. And I would highly suggest you check it out, because especially uh, late at night with a full theater. 
because it's those reactions that are really going to sell you on this movie and really get you invested. Uh, I wouldn't wait for this one in a, in, a, in, a, in a video store or anything like that because you watch it at home, you're not going to get that same effect. But I really liked it, and I think you would too. Not to gush overly much about it, but it is probably one of the scary movies you'll see this year. So, that's my opinion. Take it for what it is. Uh, you've probably been watching this for about 40 minutes now. I can't tell. I'm looking at the screen, but I don't have a time code. Anyway, uh, I am actually going to start recording a review pretty soon. I'm going to get some sleep first. Shave. <sighs> a lot of work to do. I've been sick a lot lately. I'm still coming over my allergies, which I'm still kind of fighting with a little bit. Like, I've been taking uh, Allegra and Claritin and stuff like that, but uh, sometimes when it starts to wear off, I just, I just took my latest dose. So that's why my eyes get kind of watery and I start to sniffle a little bit. And I'm so scared. Oh, that, that reminds me. The other reason I'm mad about horror movies is because I just sat through the fucking Pumpkinhead series. I was doing research for my latest review. And and you know what? Pumpkinhead 1 was much better than a movie called Pumpkinhead had any right to be. But the sequels? Oh, oh God. So bad. I'll get to that later. But till then, stay scared, okay? <laughs>